Hello, everybody. Back to back. This is exciting. I have another member of the Buffalo Extreme. I have right now with me Center John Bailey. Wanted to say hello. How's everything going tonight? Good. I'm doing great right now. Uh, thanks for having me. Excited to be on the show. Absolutely. Thanks for coming on. It's my pleasure. Um, I was kind of getting into this yesterday when I was speaking to a teammate of yours. And uh, what I said was anybody who has not been to a Buffalo Extreme game is missing out. It's, oh, it's sure. absolutely not what I expected. I'll be honest. <laughs> Buffalo is hungry for basketball. And, you know, I was thinking, all right, I'm going to go. I'm going to check this out. It's probably, I don't know what my opinions were. Um, I brought my <laughs> kids. I had a, a friend of mine who played basketball his whole life. And he's like, listen, I just, I love good basketball. So I hope it's competitive. <laughs> not only was it competitive, um, it was better than a lot of NBA games I've been to. I mean, it, it's mm -hmm. the the competition. Everybody was super into it. You know, there was no plays off like sometimes you might think. I think I think sometimes the perception with ABA or first year anything is that you're going to get a little bit of that Globetrotters vibe or or USFL vibe. You know, something that's that's semi pro. And I just don't consider that what this was at all. I mean. You guys were grinding. The game was phenomenal. It went down to the end. Uh, didn't understand a couple of the rules as far as when the light was going off. I, I didn't know really what was going on there. Yeah, yeah there's definitely some interesting rules to the ABA. But yeah, like you said, um, you know, going into this situation, uh, you know, I've been all over the country, lived in Illinois, Wisconsin, Florida, kind of bet my life on this team, right? So I wouldn't have I wouldn't have been so confident if it wasn't such a good fit and part of such a good organization with X-Gen. Um, but yeah, like you said, uh, we try to put out, uh, like you said, uh, a good product, um, because with a lot of these ABA teams, like when we go on the road, there's no real environment. There's no real atmosphere in any other gym besides here. Really? This is the only place I can imagine besides maybe Binghamton. I've heard good things about Binghamton, but okay. I haven't seen them, but they're, you know, like small local team, everyone in their town goes to their games, but uh, like Darren says often, uh, we want to bring professional basketball back to Buffalo. However it looks, you know, it's a small environment. Uh, our players are quality players. And um, it's not like we just sign guys off the street. We have Division One guys, ACC yep. guys, guys yep. that already have overseas yep. experience. Yep. And to be honest, when I first got here, um, I was just happy to be here. You know, I was just happy to be playing basketball again. But uh, this team, it's – unlike anything they've ever been a part of talent wise. So it's honestly really, really fun to play with these guys. That's really cool, man. And that's, um, that's taking, you know, that's kudos to your teammates. That's saying a ton about them. What was your path um, for anybody who doesn't know John Bailey? What, what is your path? And I think you said you're 25 years of age, right? So give us your background. How long you've been playing ball? Is this your whole life? Were you into other sports? Give me a real quick, uh, give me, give me a two minute bio on, on Mr. John. <laughs> All right, I'll I'll try to go through uh, how I ended up here as quickly as I can. So okay, okay. Um, I've always been obsessed with basketball. Uh, even when I wasn't good, I was not good at basketball for no. a long time. I was just a, <laughs> a big kid, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah. Grade school and high school. Um, Six ten, right? If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I was on I was on the bench on the freshman team as a freshman on the bench on JV as a sophomore. I didn't really play till my senior year. Even then, I was only the fifth leading scorer because we didn't pass it into the post in high school. Um, didn't <laughs> now, get how, how tall were you at that point? Like, when did you get up to your your max height? I've always been tall for my age. I think my senior year of high school, I was six nine. Wow. Okay. Eighth grade, I was like six five. Like, okay. I've always been the tallest kid in my class, and okay. it just I have a pituitary problem. I don't know what it is, but just <laughs> it's not a bad problem, man. I'm just a kid with a pituitary problem, but yeah, <laughs> so. Um, I got, uh, I spent one year at Benedictine University in Illinois, uh, credit to those guys, good organization. And I spent four years, he was a COVID year at division three called Wisconsin Lutheran college. Um, I love the guys over there. I love the coach there. Everything I know about the game, I learned from him. I don't want to dig on him at all, but, um, basketball wise specifically, it wasn't a good fit school wise. It was great. It was a division three school. Didn't think I was going to play after and then for a year, I moved to Florida for a girl. If you're watching <laughs> this, kids, never do that. All right? Oh, never man. move unless you're engaged. Never move. I love it. You're not the yeah. first one that said that either. No. Not somebody 
man. I have to be, I have Sometimes to be perfectly we all honest. Sometimes things for the girl. Yeah, so we broke up and then... So you, followed, you followed the girl to Florida from Wisconsin? Yeah, well, I, I had family down there too, but yeah, so kind of went through a rough patch. What's up, Moneyball family? I'm here to tell you about Smash Burgers from Buffalo Bros Burgers. I'm gonna be opening a storefront in the village of Hamburg, and in the meantime, you can find them on the website wherever they're going to be in town. You're gonna to wanna to turn up and show out because they have some delicious burgers. Smash Burger is a couple of burgers smashed on a bun with some cheese dripping down. You hungry yet? Check out the Smash Burger from Buffalo Bros Burgers, man. It's good stuff. What part of Florida were you in? Uh, Cape Coral, so Southwest Florida. Yep, okay. And um, after that happened, I kind of didn't really have anything going on because I was just like in Florida. I was going to go to school and I was like, I don't want to shell out all this money yep. uh, if I'm like on the fence about going back to school. And I just couldn't get basketball out of my system. I knew it's what I loved. And everyone, everyone at my old school, everyone, even my coach from my dad, like, are telling me, like, why would you keep playing? Just go get a job. Da, da, da. And I'm like, I will never be able to do this again if I don't do it now. So yeah. text my good friend. Shout out to Cooper Gady and shout out to Brett Canis. I text my friend Cooper, longtime friend. I said, hey, can you set me up with an agent, someone, anyone, or can you be my agent? He's a sports manager, uh, major. Set me up with Brett. Brett set me up with a camp in Las Vegas, and Coach Rich Jacobs saw me there, and the rest is history. That's how I ended up here. And um, I, it took me out of a very dark place, and I, I want to say this publicly. Um, this team saved my life, for sure. This team... They, none of the guys know that yet, but uh, this team has been very, very important for me and got things back on track for me. And uh, I couldn't be happier with the situation, couldn't be happier with the team, couldn't be happier to be around basketball every single day. This is uh, what I love and what I want to keep doing. John, that's amazing. Um, and and honestly, thank you for sharing something so personal. You know, um, it's it seems like as of late, you know, I, I don't know what it is. Maybe I should uh, moonlight as as a therapist, but I've had so many <clears throat> friends and and a few other people that I really don't even know that well. For some reason, it, it's been it's been gravitating where um, that or there's just so much more of it lately, right? Mm -hmm. But as recently as a couple of days ago, someone said to me, you know, I was just for the whole year of 2023, I was just in a really dark place and. I think for anyone who doesn't understand that, it's hard to kind of uh, process, right? And you say, well, what would it mean you were in a dark place? This particular person that I know, you know, is very, is pretty well off, you know, from the outside looking in, he's got a beautiful family, two little kids. And and I said, what, what could possibly be wrong? But then, you know, when you go inside the head, which you really can't, you know, that's where everything's going on, the self-doubt, the, the, the feelings of, you know, what's my purpose and, and, and things of that nature. And it's really courageous, first of all, for you to come out and say that. And second of all, you being so, <clears throat> you know, secure and, and confident about saying that you're going to make a difference in, in people's lives, you know, whether that's kids who aren't really feeling that great about themselves or, or adults or whoever it is, you having gone through that and then being where you are now is going to be a humongous impact. So I'm stoked about that. I'm I'm not stoked you were in a dark place. I'm <laughs> stoked that you dug out of it. Yeah, um, yeah. And I'll tell you what, man, speaking with your teammate yesterday, they love you. They they love you. I mean, this nothing but kindness um, out of his mouth said you were such a humble guy. You know, like I said, your name and his just his eyes lit up, you know, is he's, he's, he just his, he perked up his whole demeanor, you know. So you're loved. You're very well loved, yeah. um, which is cool. And I think the city of Buffalo, I know you don't know the area um, or at least too well, right? You'll get mm -hmm. to know it. When we find somebody, we embrace them. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. we it's it's a blue collar town. It's a Rust Belt town. We love our mm -hmm. sports. We don't have any pro basketball anymore. And this is the closest thing we have. I, um, you know, I, I told Javon yesterday, I said, there is no doubt in my mind, no doubt that within a year, not even a year, that's not going to, that's not going to be a big enough facility. You know, I see For you sure. guys playing at whether it be local colleges, uh, mm -hmm. even Hilbert down the road from me, he's got a nice facility. There's going to be somewhere that you guys are going to need to go and play because I don't know exactly that holds and sorry mm -hmm. for rambling on here a little bit. This hey, is you're good. You're good. But I'm just excited about it, you know, and, um, 
it, 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 like we kind of started with, it's great basketball for anyone mm-hmm. who thinks that it's just not, it's, it's great basketball, competitive, good basketball. <laughs> now they found you and, you know, through a series of, of this and that, what is the, I guess, scouting process for ABA, right? Are they looking for, um, what, are, what are the key ingredients that they're looking for? Uh, what do you mean? Like what type of players uh, were they looking not, for? Not only, what, not only what type of players, right? Because I think you can find good basketball players, you know, mm-hmm. under rocks sometimes, right? But I mean, there's usually a process of, hey, maybe you know somebody or do this. Are they just recruiting, I guess, like any other team or any other school would? Just seeing who's out there and then going through the process of who's the best fit? So from my understanding of how we built our team, I can't talk for some of the other lower level teams. Like a, yeah. I'm not going to name names, but there's teams yeah. we okay. beat by yeah. a lot of yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that's fair. The way, the way that we built our team, uh, from my knowledge, is very similar to how overseas teams uh, create their rosters. And it's a lot of connections, knowing the right people. And one of the reasons this team is so strong is we have our – GM, we have our Rich Jacobs and we have our Darren Fenn and we have our Bob Bates and, and we have these people in place and they know people. They know people yeah. that know people yeah. and they can say, hey, have you seen anyone that's like this? He, so I brought up uh, that Rich saw me at the Vegas camp. That right, was a lot. Right. He actually knew someone at the Vegas camp that coaches in the basketball Africa League and that's, then you. that's how it got passed to me that uh, I was passed from coach to coach. And that's how I ended up here. So the thing is um, they reached out for my, for my process, they reached out to my agent and said, Hey, we can offer this, this, and this. And uh, it was a perfect fit. So, and at the end of the day, you know, you're here. Um, the mm-hmm. reason I even asked that and dove into it is just because I think a lot of people are curious, you know, about where these, where these players are, are found. And that's why I asked that question. Mm-hmm. Um now your background, you're born and raised Wisconsin. Yes, so I lived in Milwaukee for 23 years. And then, uh, well, I had that one year in Illinois, my freshman year. Then I moved to Florida. I moved here. But uh, one thing that's cool about Milwaukee, Milwaukee is a little bit bigger, but it's pretty much just like Buffalo. Like that you 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 nailed it. Yeah, the people, the vibe, the everyone's nice. We embrace our people. If you bring up Giannis in Milwaukee, it's like bringing up Josh Allen in Buffalo. It's yeah. identical. Like the way that yep. we've embraced Giannis, like Giannis winning that championship changed the city forever. It Dude. completely changed it. And and we're still, you know, we have our Buffalo Bandits lacrosse championship, but we're still we're still <laughs> longing. Uh, I think you know about there's this team called the Buffalo Bills that uh, lost yeah. four consecutive Super Bowls in the early '90s. Yeah, I've heard a thing or two about that. You may have heard a thing or two about that. You may have heard a thing or two about no goal. Uh, 1999 Buffalo Sabres, Brett Hall was standing in the crease. Mm. And uh, that's how the Dallas Stars beat us. There's still a big con. You know, there's still people driving around in Buffalo with no goal bumper stickers. I mean, bro, th- this was 99, you know. 24 years ago. Jeez. And they're just, they can't let it go. Yeah. No, I think I think we had uh, – we had – one in Wisconsin that we were holding on to for a while. I can't remember what it was. I think it was a Des Bryant catch uh, in the playoffs, maybe, where he, like, dropped it, and it changed the rule completely. But uh, I'm not Well, you're sure. right. You're right. Yep, yep. They changed the yeah. way what a, what a catch was. Yeah, yeah. Changed it completely because he fumbled it. And then, anyway, I'm not – I've been basketball my whole life, so I yeah, can't talk yeah. too much about that. But uh, Milwaukee, though, is so synonymous with with Buffalo. It's it's so funny that you said that, man. Uh, mm-hmm. our, we're on the same path. My wife mm-hmm. and I have been fortunate enough to go to every Major League Baseball stadium. We're a huge, huge baseball family. So we started this uh, years ago, and so the kids. I have three little boys now. They've been to some of them, but mostly just my wife and I. And um, a couple questions that we get always are, "What was your favorite stadium?" And then secondly, is always, "What." city was most like buffalo and her and i both instantly said milwaukee wisconsin we um i remember being up we stayed over in a in a hotel nothing real nice it was like you know a typical and we got up and i think it was a had to be a game day um but it was a brewers game mm-hmm. it it wasn't even you know a football weekend it was a brewers game and these guys were 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 cracking suds at like you know 12:30 in the afternoon uh, well yeah 
I mean, that's also just a Milwaukee thing. We're the drunkest city in the world by well, far. <laughs> you got a rival with Buffalo. That, that's what I'm saying, man. Like Buffalo is yeah. notorious for it, right? Like I yeah. think per per capita, because I don't even know which is bigger, Milwaukee or Buffalo, but per capita, yeah. we're running neck and neck. Oh my goodness, you! I cannot, I can't put into words how much Wisconsin can drink. Like. <laughs> It's just like that's something like okay, not to share too much about my college experience, but when I was no, in college, go ahead. that's like, what we're here for. Like, especially like my freshman year, definitely didn't do it, but like I had the genes to outdrink every single person in Illinois <laughs> by far. It's not even close, but uh that's no great. Wisconsin. And you're, six, and you're six ten, so I mean oh you can God. you know you can handle a little more. Yeah, I was taking on case races by myself. It was that's insane. Uncanny, but yeah, yeah. Uh, Milwaukee's definitely, uh, definitely can drink. So, yeah. How, is, how is how has Buffalo embraced you? How have the fans been? And I mm. know obviously we just compared the two cities. Um, you know, initially when you got here, had you ever been to Buffalo before you got here? This was my first time being to Buffalo. I'd never even, I didn't even know Niagara Falls was thirty minutes from downtown. I had no idea it was right there. I thought it was like a like you had to drive two hours or something to like a different part of the state, but it's right there. So but uh, one thing Buffalonians get furious about is that whenever there's a Buffalo Bills game, they show Niagara Falls on it. And it's not, it's kind of like showing, um, I, I don't know, like we just get mad because it's not Buffalo. That's Niagara Falls. Yeah. Yeah. And exactly. Orchard Park, you know, obviously from, from being here, Orchard Park is so far from the city. Mm-hmm. So the Bills play and where their stadium is. So it's really interesting. But Green Bay is like that, too, if I'm not mistaken, right? Uh, I believe so, yes. Uh, last time I was there, I don't know. Like, isn't Lambeau away from the city, too? I don't – the thing is about Green Bay is, like, there's not really a city. Like, I don't yeah. – like, because when – the one game I went to in my life, it was, like, in a suburb. Like, it was so weird. Like, there was a rest center, which is, like, where they're uh, – I forget who plays there, but I think the UW Green Bay team plays there. And then Lambeau Field is right there. And then you look outside the stadium, it's just like regular houses. And then it's just yeah. like, like, it's like they just like dropped a, a field. <laughs> and it's just been there for 500 years. I don't know how long Lambeau has been, yeah, there. It's been there forever. forever. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, to bring it back to your question about. Uh, yeah, I'm Buffalo. sorry, man. I always, I always ask a question, then I go on a tangent. But how has the city <laughs> embraced you and how's everything been? No, the 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 thing is about the city is it's it's so fun being here because one, it doesn't feel like I've really left Milwaukee outside of like I, I miss my family and friends obviously I went to sure, see them sure, sure. for Christmas but when I'm here like like I get to coach uh, like my fifth graders and I do a lot of training with all these kids and then those same kids that I'm training they see me at practice they can come see me at my games. So cool, and yeah. I hear it in the crowd. I hear Coach Bailey, Coach John, all yeah. this stuff. So it's not like it is professional basketball, but at the same time, we have this true fan base of people who are legitimate like fans. Like I've never – that's something I'm getting used to. I'm not used to having a fan. Like a lot of yeah. these other guys have played in the ACC or overseas. Like they they know what having fans is like. Yeah, yeah. I'm out here. You saw me. I was signing autographs after the game. I've never signed an autograph in yeah. my life. Before, yeah, no, so. it, and, and it was – it was funny, man, because, you know, and, and, and it was awesome. It was awesome to see just what you were exactly. doing. And, mm-hmm. and you, you know, and you could kind of tell. And, and I was so proud. You know, it's a proud feeling, proud of you, mm-hmm. proud of everything. And you were you handled it like a boss and, and you know, like you had been there. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's professionalism, acting like you, you, you've you been there, you know. Exactly. The yeah, coaching, exactly. do you coach with with X-Gen? Like, what is the coaching? Yes. So I coach with X-Gen. Uh, I have a winter ball team uh, that I coach here um love those kids to death uh those are like the main fans um and like their parents come i know their parents and then i also coach in the xbl it's a it's a league that we run like after school and on sundays okay. um it just stays here and we play every week kind of like a i can't think of a good example like do you have church ball or like anything like that where yeah, it's kind of yeah like, we have like little cagers yeah yeah stuff like that where it's just yeah. like we always play here every friday night um and, and is that is that for the more is that for the um not quite as advanced kid? Uh for the most part, yes. Uh but over the summer it gets a bit more competitive, uh, just because kids are looking for more and more competition. But in the winter, a lot of kids are playing for their high school teams and stuff like that. But you know, we still uh get a lot of guys here. It's super, super fun. It's good, that's a good environment as well, uh, watching all those games. 
How do kids get involved with with kids or or adults? How do they get involved with with XGen? Um, a few of my friends said they went and played XGenElite.com, baby. XGenElite.com. Okay, yeah, give me, give me, give me the plug here. Give me the plug. Yeah, XGenElite.com. Uh, the XBL League is super affordable. I think it's. I don't. I don't want to say it's more than two twenty five. I think it's one seventy five for a whole league, and you get to play eight nine games plus playoffs, and uh, super easy to sign up. Just go to the website. Everything that we have uh, to offer is there. Um, like I said, we do. Uh, we have open gyms during the day. Come in, get shots up. Uh, we have court rentals uh, late at night okay. if you want to get your boys uh, stuff. Uh, get five on five runs. We have winter ball teams, AAU teams, X Gen teams uh xbl teams uh there's always something going on extra yeah, so this is this is where mecca yeah, I, of basketball it's heaven for me <laughs> heaven for me just all basketball it certainly is man you remind me so much of my brother-in-law tim it's like if the two of you got together you'd probably be stuck in a room and you'd and you'd be perfectly fine with it for two days he's just didn't you know, I, I always say he was the only white kid on the ECC team, uh, you know, ECC college team a few years back. And mm -hmm. uh, and he took so much pride in it and not not the race thing, but just because he was at that level. You know what I mean? And it was funny to see him out there. He played a little bit. He'd shoot a three here and there, you know. Yeah, of course. Of course. But uh, I, I just signed my son Jackson up. He's playing uh, over in Hamburg at like just some church rec thing like you had just mentioned. And had I known yeah. about this a month ago, this is this is where he'd be and this is where he will be. Is it? What age groups is it? Is it all the way? It goes from like, we have our bitty ball kids. I think the youngest goes to like first or second grade. I think okay. first grade. And then it goes all the way through eighth grade, ninth grade. And then over the summer, uh, we're going to try to get high school again. Uh, okay. We couldn't get enough high school people this time around. But uh, we do do it through high school, especially over the summers. Over the summer, it gets super, super competitive. And it's super affordable. Uh, there's highlights for every game. There's uh, a report. I write the report. It's one of the things I do. Okay, uh, cool, cool. Me. But yeah, uh, yeah it's, it. it's super, super fun. So a couple people too, when I mentioned it, they've said, "Oh, those X Gen boys are crazy." What do they? What do they mean? Uh, I don't know like what they a, mean. I, they, I couldn't they say tell like. Them. Maybe it's late night games you guys are running or something, or maybe that you know you're you're training or. or I sleeping. think if if we're talking about like the older like kids, yeah, uh, that play late at night. Uh, yeah, we've had a. A few people come in that are a bit uh okay wonky. but the right. kids that we coach the kids that we coach are great yeah. yeah yeah is it a public forum though where like you just said it's they can open it's it's open gym time so anybody can kind of go and sign up and play is that where you get that from like like so people that, a day like from like just noon to four no like the late night ones the late night runs so i think the way it works is uh you have to have at least 10 people and it's a hundred dollars a session so like ten dollars a person and then each additional person is another ten dollars, um, and then you get like an hour and a half uh, to run from like nine thirty to eleven, then eleven to twelve thirty. Um, so we seeing have not guys being, not seeing not being stupid, but that that's kind of where you're gonna get. It's like into it's like going to a bar and getting dollar beers. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that's such a that's such a good deal to go play at a really nice facility. Yeah, so, yeah. Then we got music running. We let them use the scoreboard sometimes. Uh, yeah. Um, if I wasn't I wish I had this in Florida because when I was in Florida, fun little story here. Yeah. Uh, when I was in Florida, I used to go to an East Florida down there and the East Florida in Cape Coral had the only indoor facility that you could use like openly. Yep. Um, and Hurricane Ian hit and it caved in the, uh, like Hurricane Ian hit us directly and it yep. hit and it caved in our, of uh, the gym and it messed up the floors. All the floorboards were all wavy and stuff. Yep, yep. And they just never repaired it. So for the last few months, or that wasn't Hurricane Ian. That was a different storm. But for the last few months before I came here, I couldn't find a court. I was like playing at outdoor courts in the middle of summer in Florida. So it was like too hot. As soon as I got here, I was like, oh, I'm I, every single day. Like once everyone left, I was here for like an hour, two hours. I'm like. I just miss having a rim and an air conditioned facility. And this yeah. is so nice. It's like, I've never been more grateful just to be on an indoor basketball court. That's, was... that's absolutely ridiculous too, because uh, my parents live down in Florida. They're in Wesley Chapel right outside of Tampa. Yeah. And they have full hockey facilities. Now they have these giant hockey facilities with three, four rinks in Florida, but, but you can't find an indoor basketball court. It, it, it was the city. I mean, 
Cape Coral kind of got messed up for a while because of the hurricane. Not to bring yeah. it back to another sad thing. But, right, right, right. No, yeah. No, uh, the hurricane was supposed to hit Tampa. Then it moved down yep. to Cape Coral directly. And Cape Coral didn't really have the infrastructure to begin they with. They weren't prepared for it. Because, like, yeah. no one's heard of Cape Coral. And, like, no one really knows that the hurricane hit that bad. But that was, like, our Katrina. So Is that down by Port Charlotte? Like, is that? It's close. I think it's about 45 minutes south. Okay. Yeah, south of Port Charlotte, and it's north of Naples. So. Okay, I know exactly. Yeah, yeah, I like Naples, Marco Island area, and and we're diehard Atlanta Braves fans, so we're down, uh, Venice every every spring training. You know, mm, we got gotcha, to Northport gotcha. and um, Florida's. A, I mean, it's a great area, but like you said, it's so hot in the summer. You can't out. You can't really be outside playing ball. You need to be inside. Exactly. Exactly. So getting outside, it's like cardio right away. Anything else you want to add? Um, I feel like first of all, I feel like I've made a friend. Um, I feel like you're just, you know, you're, you you kind of have that charisma and that persona that uh, you're someone you meet. You don't feel like you're kind of interviewing. You, you feel like you're, you know, you're making a friend. And that's a huge compliment, man. I, I can't it. say that, you know, about everybody. Um, so a ton of respect there. Anything you want to add? Any fun facts people might not know about, John? Fun facts. Um, let me think. 